the clog. They had always had access. Access was easy. It had been a not-so-secret secret for decades. The tunnels were intricate, yet direct. Once under the main source, it was a vertical climb up to the White House kitchen, where stealth moves were required to sneak beneath tables, alongside blazing hot stoves, towards the massive mother load. The pantry was easy to raid. Entire loaves of bread could go missing without anyone noticing. They were careful to avoid leaving a crumb trail, and the growing rat family stayed healthy and happy. Every few years there was a turnover, and the food staples would change. The rats were overjoyed that the prior host was finally gone, as there had been a severe shortage of starches and junk food for ages. Eight years to be exact. The new tenants were a welcome supplier of white bread, processed crackers, and yellow cheese. To top it all off, there was a delightful supply of fast food to be pilfered from trash bins. Fries, burger buns, and fried chicken were absolutely irresistible. The rats gained weight, and within a year, a few had become too fat to get through the tunnels. This was when a disaster occurred. Two of the rats got jammed inside the main line to the kitchen, causing a major backup. They needed help, and they knew just who to call. Sure, they'd risk losing the two fat buddies, but collateral damage was a burden they'd simply have to shoulder. The boa constrictors resided in the sewers of the surrounding city. Long ago, an escapee from the zoo had mated with a female who was let loose by a lousy pet owner. They had bred, and now the family of snakes had countless cousins, all living within the underwater system of Washington, D.C. As the elderly, oversized rat informed the snake boss of their clog problem, the big boa gathered his extended family around, and they slipped away into the underground tunnels with ease until they reached the trapped rats. After devouring the blockage, the boa swiftly continued a long route towards the jackpot. Upon arriving in the kitchen, they slithered silently behind the walls towards the pantry. By now it was late, and there were workers busy stocking shelves so they decided to bypass the kitchen and check out the second floor. Silently, they headed up a narrow opening behind an ancient dumbwaiter and emerged onto the dimmed upper hallway. In the stagnant air, the snakes detected a strong scent of chicken. Slithering along dark red Persian carpets, they felt their way against the plastic gilded moldings. It was well past midnight when the lead snake paused, startled by an electronic pinging sound. He slowly headed towards the noise which was coming from behind a door. A weak stream of light seeped through. The smell of chicken filled his nostrils. He waited there for his partners to catch up. They gathered by the base of the door, contemplating how to flatten enough to slide beneath it. Aligning themselves, the five snakes pressed together as one. Silently, they burst through and into the bathroom where they saw a large fat man in a white hotel robe hunched over on a gold toilet. His eyes were closed as he ate KFC from a box on the shelf. While chewing loudly, he hummed in a monotonous no tone, gripping a phone in his free hand. He was too busy to notice the snakes heading towards him. Suddenly, one gripped each of his legs and wrapped tightly around the limbs as the other three slid up behind the toilet, winding effortlessly around his thick neck. In unison, they began to squeeze. The giant lurched forward and tried to yell, but no sound came out other than a loud belch. A half-eaten chicken leg dropped to the gold-tiled floor, followed by his cell phone, which shattered into pieces. His heavy head flopped down, a stringy yellowed hairpiece flapping forward over a distorted face. Large, dirty dentures clattered to the floor. The man's stomach bulged and he let out a long fart. The snakes untethered themselves and snatched the remaining fried chicken. With that, they seamlessly slipped under the door. Making their way down the halls, they passed a few of the rats along the way and shared a swift, knowing glance. With a low hiss, they headed towards the exit tunnel, disappearing back into the underworld of D.C.